meet Shep and Isis, an Egyptian noblewoman who's just been reconstructed. And this is her depiction. We'll come back to this in just a moment. Let's look at the article here. Released on January 21st, 2022. Meet Shep and Isis. Scientists reconstruct the face of a female mummy. Meet Shep and Isis. Scientists reconstructed the face of a female mummy, mummy who died 2,600 years ago, revealing she was probably a beautiful young lady despite having a set of protruding teeth. If you noticed in the picture there, she had slightly overbite, but that's been seen in a huge array of the Egyptian nobles and Mediterraneans and so on, famously King Tut and so on. Researchers have created an amazing facial reconstruction of an Egyptian mummy found in the 19th century. Shep and Isis was found in 1819 at Del Erbari, a complex of temples and tombs on the west bank of the Nile, a sign of death. She is considered to be the most famous Egyptian mummy in Switzerland where she's been kept since 1820. She was likely a beautiful lady during her lifetime with deep brown eyes and slightly protruding upper teeth. Well, the deep brown eyes really wouldn't come into the situation until much later. Sometimes I wish these people would study what's come out on Egypt before they make comments sometimes. For the recent paper, came out about two years ago, showing you the ancient necropolis that they had and taking out so many mummies that they didn't show this Mediterranean or darker skin effect or necessarily have brown eyes until much later brought about upon those people because of admixing with slaves or black people and they show in that forensic assessment in fact the paper is named that sub-saharan ancestry shows up way later in the Egyptian dynasties way at the very end and a statement was made that they only have a 1% genetic match to the ancients but if you read into it they say the difference is now they have a lot of black admix which did not exist through all of the times of ancient Egypt. A forensic reconstruction of the face of a female mummy who died 2600 years ago reveals a beautiful young lady with deep brown eyes, slightly protruding upper teeth as they say. Scientists have spent months recreating the reconstruction of what they call the most famous Egyptian mummy in Switzerland known as Shepanisens or Shepanisi. According to CT scans and morphological data on her skeleton, and what they were able to do is do CT scans and then recreate her skull using that with a 3D printer, and then someone uses that rather than her actual skull to do a recreation like they do for forensics. Shepanisis was found in 1819 at Del Bari, a famous complex of mortuary temples and tombs located on the west bank of the Nile River in Egypt, before being transported to Switzerland in 1820. The remains are currently kept in Sao Gallo Abbey Library in the Swiss city of St. Gallen. Inscriptions on her sarcophagus suggest that she belongs to a wealthy upper class family and would have had some degree of formal education during her existence in the 7th century BC. She was the daughter of a priest in the city of Thebes and according to experts lived in, in the, the late period in the early 26th dynasty in the late heyday of ancient Egypt prior to her death in 610. However, it's not possible to identify the name or profession of Shep and Isis' husband or whether or not she gave birth to children, actually. It's unknown. Here again is another depiction of her. Again, if you just saw the intro that I use for Egyptian videos, 
It starts out with people that are from the earliest dynasties of ancient Egypt, and they look remarkably similar to this facial reconstruction. But the difference is all of those have crystal blue eyes and set into their statues, something that kept all the way through the 12th dynasty or so, and then faded off and you don't really see it anymore. But that didn't mean none of them were blue-eyed anymore, of course. The ability to make the crystal eyes that really recreate a human eye in effect and made it look like you were followed around the room was lost somehow or no longer used. Can you imagine if someone did that technique to the ancient Greek statues and how realistic they would have looked? Scientists have reconstructed the face of a female mummy who died 6,200 years ago, revealing a, I believe that's 2,600 years ago, there's a typo right there, revealing a beautiful young lady despite having a set of protruding teeth. Well, bucked teeth isn't necessarily so unsightly. A lot of other formations like that could be much less. You can see here where they took that 3D scan and turned it into the skull and then by forensics have applied back on the layers of muscles and skin and so on to recreate her. Scientists have spent months reconstructing what they call the most famous Egyptian mummy in Switzerland, known as Shepanisis or Shepinsa. Using CT scans, morphological data from her skeleton, the mummy of the young woman arrived in Switzerland in 1820 has been a star among the Switzerlands ever since. I do get tired of reading articles like this whenever they repeat the same five phrases over and over again or try to recreate it in a different way or restate it in some different way again it really gets monotonous here's something that looks like what they have done where they CT scanned it through you can see they only did the top portion of her body what would say the bust and up of it and uh, where they utilized forensic data recreating her Reconstruction tissue looking up towards the upper thoracic cavity in that picture. A very similar package have also been found in the mummy of Shepanisis' father in Berlin. Well, who was Shepanisis? A woman who lived in Egypt during the 7th century BC. In 1819, her remains were found in uh, Del Bari, a famous complex of mortuary temples and tombs located on the west bank of the Nile. She was found in a family tomb located with the mortuary temple of Pharaoh Hashepsut, along with her father, Pa S. Denfi, whose mummy is also in Berlin. Inscription on her sarcophagus suggested she belonged to a wealthy upper class family and would have had some degree of formal education during her existence in the 7th century. She was the daughter of a priest in the city of Thebes, and according to experts, uh, lived in the late period, early 26th dynasty, the last heyday of ancient Egypt. Yes, in the 25th dynasty, they were overrun by the Cushites, who were actually ruled over by viceroys of Cush, so we can see who made that happen and how that happened. But this was after their fact, and then, of course, Egypt started going downhill from there. And this was in the dynasties that are just after that, after it had been set back to right, the 26th dynasty. Her reconstruction project was conducted by the FPAB Research Center in Sicily and Flinders University in Australia, collaboration with Cicero Moraes, a 3D designer from Brazil. Moraes has previously created a series of facial constructions of her historical figures such as Mary Magdalene and Jesus Christ. I don't know how he was able to do that without any forensic data on either one of them. It was commissioned by the Abbey Library of St. Gall, which owned the CT, computerized top tomography scans, of the mummy for years. The harmonious and well-proportioned skull suggests that Shefflees was probably a beautiful lady during her lifetime, the experts say, and mentioned in the first reports 
from 1820 after her discovery is a good and complete preservation of her teeth, the team say which is one of her most notable features in the reconstruction is that classic overbite that King Tut and so many others have shown to exhibit. The team built up the living layers bit by bit, adding tissue and eyes and skin for fine details such as hair and tiny freckles around the nose to complement the effect. They didn't really utilize the hair, though, it says in other ones, because that could be ambiguous somehow, nor did they mention that her clothing and things like that went along with it. They tried to say that would be somewhat ambiguous and a guesswork, which if you have it exactly right there in front of you, I'm not sure how that comes about as a proper statement. Shevanisis was found in a family tomb located with the mortuary temple of Hatshepsut and Delavari, along with her father, Pas S. Genfi, whose mummy is in Berlin. Based on Shepanisis' anatomical age and the style of her inner coffin, she must have been born around 650 B.C. and died between 620 and 610 B.C. Due to her mummified ear, the shape of the ear can be reconstructed quite accurately in contrast to pure skeletons where ears are constructed with a generic ear. In this case, they actually knew how her ear actually looked because these mummies are well preserved and contain their skin also. We are so lucky that the Egyptians did this to themselves or we probably would never hear the end of it. Certain details may also have been recorded for Chef Isis. For example, the team did not know the exact eye color, exact skin com uh, complexion. Due to her Egyptian ancestry, brown eyes and a somewhat olive skin were assumed. One wondered why they're assuming that at that point whenever they find out, like I said before in the paper just two years ago on the Max in in Institute, that they realized that... Uh, no, most of these people did not have a genetics which corresponded to brown eyes, in fact quite often green and blue eyes, and lighter hair. If one just goes to look at wavy hair, curly hair, in wiki, you just go to wiki and go to hair and pull it down to curly and you'll actually see a blonde wig and a blonde scalp with the hair still on it and they tell you that that was someone's blonde wig and the other one is their actual scalp showing real hair color and that blonde hair was up under a blackened wig when they found it that explains a lot of things unlike many other facial constructions jewelry clothing and wigs were not used as these were hypothetical assumptions according to the team well, they could assume that she's wearing this, that, and the other, or so on. Or they could use maybe some clothing of the time. Something along that line. Our reconstruction focuses exclusively on the forensically reconstructed appearance and anatomical evidence. So they didn't care to do that extra stuff on there. They wanted to show you that she was Caucasian. And what the skull actually shows. Not make up what her eerie earrings might have looked like although in the depiction that they show they do do that little Egyptian eye makeup out the corner of her eyes the results in their efforts have been published in the form of a monograph entitled the forensic facial reconstruction of Shep and Isis listed on Amazon so again here's a set of forensics that they went through to end up with her eventual reconstruction and let's get a closer look up on our face as we end the video. Let me know what you think down in the comments down below. And we'll get on to another aspect of ancient civilizations. Peace.